Hello everyone, welcome to our Intake channel. Today we're going to talk about this CO2 battery that could revolutionize the future of energy storage. CO2 is infamous for being the main culprit of climate change, but what if this global warming villain could be turned into a green energy hero? Believe it or not, carbon dioxide is the key component in development for the new green battery. In particular, it could be quickly deployed around the world. As you may know, carbon dioxide is one of the major greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. CO2 and other greenhouse gases occur naturally in our atmosphere and act as a sort of blanket for the planet. It is essential that we have this blanket, but it's getting thicker, so to speak, and trapping too much heat. CO2 is clearly the villain of this scenario, but perhaps there is a room for a redemption story. Renewable energy is one of the best weapons we have to fight global warming, especially by reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Efficient and sustainable, they are the future, but we desperately need storage systems that also cost effective and sustainable. In June 2021, Italian startup Energy Dome successfully demonstrated the operation of the world's first CO2 battery at pilot scale. This took place in Sardinia, an environment with plenty of sun and wind. This isolated area has triggered more opportunities for solar and wind energy. Yet, the problem was the storage capacity of their device, which only has 4 megawatt hours. Their first commercial scale plant would have 200 megawatt hours according to their projections. It should be operational by the end of next year. After the testing, the Energy Dome battery appears to be ready to store renewable energy and be distributed for 24 hours. In addition to the recent 11 million fundraising to commercializing their long batteries for the utility, the startup have already designed a few contracts. For example, they'll be setting up a 20 megawatt 5 hour installation for ASA, Italy's second largest power company. In addition, Yuandal Energia has signed a contract to develop energy storage systems in Italy, Germany, and the Middle East and Africa. The Energy Gnome technology is based on a closed loop thermodynamic system. Gas is stored at ambient temperature and pressure after being pressurized by a turbocharger. The CO2 turns into a very dense liquid, which is stored in a kind of fire extinguisher at room temperature at 70 bar. The charging station stores the renewable energy in the liquid CO2 at high pressure. At the same time, the system recovers and stores the heat introduced by the compression of the two thermal units. When the energy needs to be discharged, the recovered heat is then reused to convert to liquid CO2 back into the system after passing through the expander. The gas flow drives a turbine to generate electricity that will supply to the grid. To close the loop, the CO2 is then returned to the dome to begin the next charging cycle. If you're worried about needing a lot of CO2 to keep charging the system over time, don't worry, it's a closed loop system. Claudio Sparrocini, the CEO of Energy Dome, noted in particular that in the case of their own experiment, they only had to refill in the first time before use. Kind of like an air conditioner in a car. It is important to note that pressurized CO2 is not the only gas that you can use as a storage medium. Using a simpler approach, you can exploit pressurized air instead. In fact, depending on how much you compress the air, you can also consider using it as a storage medium. So, energy density gives you an idea of how many kilowatt hours you can store per unit volume. According to the figures reported by the Energy Dome, the energy density of the CO2 battery is up to 11 times that of compressed air. For this reason, compressed air systems need huge space, such as underground cellars, to store the low energy density compressed air. This can only be found in certain locations, which limits its scalability. On the other hand, liquid air can hold almost twice as many kilowatt hours per cubic meter compared to the energy dome system. Nevertheless, for liquid air to work, you have to go down to really low temperatures to liquefy the air. Then, go the other way and heat the liquefied air to the room temperature to generate electricity. Now, this drastic cooling and reheating cycle is a part of a process of a round-trip efficiency of about 45-70%. to 70 Energy Dome's design is also quite simple as it only uses two steps, compression and evaporation. This lighter scheme minimizes energy loss, leading to round-trip efficiencies of up to 75-80%, to 80 as well as being more efficient than air at storing energy. CO2 can also be a robust alternative to metal-based batteries, as Energy Dome claims. Its device would have more than 50 times cheaper than a similar sized lithium battery. Once scaled, they predicted that 25 megawatt per hour and 200 megawatt per hour plant would have a levelized cost of storage at $50 per megawatt hour. Liquid air storage is no cheaper with a levelized cost of storing range of up to 300 megawatts per hour. To give you an idea, right now the levelized cost of storage is estimated at $186 per megawatt hour in the utilities. 
To verify Energy Dome's numbers, we'll have to wait at least until 2023 or 2024. In addition, the key ingredient in Energy Dome is much more sustainable than the raw materials in commercial batteries. For example, the extraction of one ton of lithium consumes almost 2 million liters of water. Another major cathode component is nickel, which wins the shameful race of the most carbon-intensifying mining. When it comes to cobalt, about 70% of the world's supply comes from the Democratic Republic of Congo, which has a disastrous record of forced labor, child labor, and safety. Energy Dome batteries require only steel, CO2, and water. The great advantage of Energy Dome is the technology is based on an existing industry. The vessels, the heat exchangers, and the compressor, the turbine, the generator, the engine. It's an industry that is present anywhere in North America, Europe, and the Far East. There are many other technologies that have bottlenecks in the chain supply. For example, another limitation of lithium batteries is time. For a storage standpoint, the most installations cap at about 6 hours to get the best cost average. Obviously, that's not enough to support the grid during the extended periods of low renewable energy overnight. That's where Energy Dome could come in handy, as its CO2 battery could produce more power in the 24 hours. It is also important to know that lithium batteries have a lifespan of 15 years at best, as their performance degrades with the charging cycles. Whereas, the Energy Dome system is supposed to last up to 30 years without degradation. Flexibility is another strength of the Energy Dome solution, which uses a modular approach to customize battery size to meet different storage needs. For example, Energy Dome stores CO2 and atmospheric pressure in the above-ground inflatable gas tank, or dome, like a tennis court bubble filled with CO2. As its CEO said, the potential's problem is space. How does the system scale? He confirmed that space is one of the limitations of the Energy Dome in the terms of size. Their system is not the most compact, and that's the only drawback they could have compared to lithium-ion batteries. They claim 75% efficiency, which has generated a wave of skepticism. Yet the efficiency of lithium batteries is 90%, and hydraulic storage systems reach 80%. Unlike lithium-ion batteries that gradually lose their storage capacity, energy storage systems like Energy Dome and Pumped Hydro do not lose their storage potential over time. For Energy Dome, turning the evil CO2 into a climate savior sounds exciting and they know what they're doing. Still, we should be cautious and wait to see the real cost of their first commercial scale plant in a year or two. This may not be the silver bullet to the climate change dilemma, as there's no silver bullet here but it can reduce the need for fossil fuels as a backup power source for renewables while reducing the mining need for traditional batteries. They won't entirely replace lithium-ion batteries, which remain the most effective cost option for small-scale, near-term applications. So, integrating the two technologies could be the best green solution for years to come. That's it, we've reached the end of our topic for today. If you enjoyed this video, leave us a little blue thumbs up. If you don't want me to miss our next topic, don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell. Thanks for sticking around to the end of our video, and we'll see you soon on ATEC.